Hello and welcome back to another one of my videos. Thanks for taking the time to take a look. So this video is going to be about CV play, as you've seen. So this is due to Wargaming introducing the Grand Naval Battles. Uh, some of the missions require CV kills and some people believe that it's a bit too difficult. Hopefully this video is going to give you some of the very basics to help you along the way. I think it's easiest in a Langley myself. I think some people will agree with that. So what we're going to do is have a look at a Langley and some of the basics of how to play CV. So first things first, we're going to need to buy ourselves a Langley. At the moment there's a discount on this weekend, so I'm going to take advantage of that and purchase myself a Langley. I think you can probably get away with a single skill point captain, so only costing you 10,000 credits, rather than using any gold. And um, we're going to put that captain's skill point into situational awareness so that we know if we're spotted. Well, this carrier will come on to it in a moment or two, but it doesn't move fast, you need to know you're spotted. So let's look at the modules, uh, some of the upgrades and bits and pieces before we go into a battle. So one of the first upgrades we'll put onto the ship then is we'll upgrade the hull itself. The hull itself upgrading will give us an increase to hit points, an increase in our hangar, and also it will improve the maneuverability. Uh, we'll then go on to improve the fighters. This will give us faster fighters, healthier fighters. They have a bit less ammunition, but they do more damage per minute, which is good. Get the enemy fighters down and gain air superiority. I'll pop those on. And the next thing we'll do is we'll upgrade the torpedo bombers. Now this simply gives us an increase in speed and an increase in health of the torpedo bombers. Uh, healthier they are, the better they are. The longer they'll last over enemy lines, and that's where they're going to spend a lot of their life. Let's uh, pick that up. And then what we'll do is we'll pick up the improved dive bombers. Uh, dive bombers only gets more speed. The faster they get out there, pop drop the bombs and get back to the ship, the better. Um, important then to put on the improved uh, repair party. Full credits rather than gold, as you've seen me just do just there. Um, and then we'll increase our so we'll put in some modules. So we're going to put on a module to increase the uh, fighter capabilities or 10% to aircraft guns. Very good to get the enemy fighters down. And the module to improve the ship's characteristics uh, in terms of uh, flooding and fire. So this is going to give us less chance to flood and less chance to fire, which is good in case we do get caught out by enemy bombers. And then we'll just take a look at the ship's characteristics now. So you can see we have uh, on this particular ship 33,700 hit points, uh, very, very thin armour. Um, you'll see that uh, the aircraft characteristics, I'm going to have a little look at the aircraft just now. So you have three squadrons, of course, one of fighters, one of uh, torpedo bombers and one of dive bombers. So Langley recently got an upgrade in that respect. Here we can see the fighters. Uh, move on next to the... Uh, these are the torpedo bombers, and then lastly to the dive bombers. All very shiny. And then we'll take a look next at the uh, secondary armament. Uh, secondary armament doesn't fire very fast or very far, uh, so not going to be great for very much really, unfortunately. I have had some lucky hits on uh, torpedoes with very low hit points around me. The anti-air, only a 1.2 kilometer range on these ones and a 3.5 kilometer range on the next ones. Not a great deal of damage per minute though on those uh, that anti-aircraft fire, so don't expect much from it, but in a pinch it can help. Now you can see that the maneuverability on this particular ship is pretty slow. 15 knots is not going to be great, and unfortunately you get detected from 10.1 kilometers away. So, with all that said and done, let's take it out for a simulated battle. And I'll show you the very basics of how to use a carrier to the best effect. So here you can see I'm simply against a single New York uh, on the ocean map, just to give you an idea of what to do. So we'll run through the basics in here. So first thing you can see is that um, I've set my ship a waypoint. Uh, so you can do this pressing M and guiding your ship on a cruise control waypoint. Here you can see the planes flying along. Uh, I've clumped them up into one group. There's a good reason for that. If there was an enemy CV we'd be, and the enemy CV sent a fighter to attack our bombers, we'd be able to use our fighter to ward off those, fight, those enemy fighters, make sure our bombers get to the target quickly. 
so the reason I've set the waypoint for my ship is that I wanted the to be moving. If there's an enemy carrier and he sent any bombers after me, it's good to be moving so that you've got the maneuverability to get away from any torps that come in towards you. Uh, you don't want to be taking any torpedoes or any bombs if you can do. But if you are going to have them come towards you, the best thing is to be moving so that you can avoid them. What we're doing just at the moment is looking for this uh, New York and there he is. So the number one thing to remember when we're dropping ordnance on enemy ships is that we fire, put fires on first and then we flood afterwards. So the principle is that we set fire to him and then after we set fire to him we're going to use the torpedoes to follow up and hopefully get floods on him. If we can do that he'll use his uh, repair party for the fires here you can see me using a manual drop, so alt click in to make sure that the, we get the smallest possible spread. So we hit him reasonably hard and we put a couple of fires on. Now you can see me looking at the ship there, we can see he's put his fires out. There's so around about 20 seconds on the majority of ships, some are 10, some are 15, some are 20, for that repair party to cancel out while he gains or loses his immunity to any further damage, or any further flooding or fire damage. So now we're going to bring the torpedoes in. Again, we're going to manual drop the torpedoes. We want to be aiming just in front of him to counter for his movement. Um, a manual drop is the only way to drop torpedoes. The auto drops are far too inaccurate and allow the enemy to evade your torpedoes. So again, just, just a little in front. Just keeping an eye on it. And we'll, we'll make a last minute adjustment there. And we're going to hope for some flooding on this guy. Because he's used his repair party, he'll then be flooding for the, until we get back to him. So very unluckily there, we get four torpedo hits and not one single one caused flooding to the enemy ship. If we had, he wouldn't have been able to repair that flooding away and he would have been losing health all the while that we were already, you know, coming back with our bombers and, uh, and working away from there. So will just speed this up a little bit just now, keeping him spotted with our fighter. And we're setting a attack for the, uh, the bomber to come back out again. Now, sometimes um, auto drops are okay on a bomber. Not always, though. If you've got time and you've got the ability, you're much better off using a manual drop on it. And what I'm going to show you now is how to make sure that manual drop works. You see the, the enemy ship is turning now. So what I'm going to do is set the bomber to drop just a little bit ahead of him, just for now. Or I shouldn't say drop, actually. is He's just aiming that way. He's flying that direction. So it's going to go to the right of him just for now. I'm making sure that the, uh, the torpedo bombers are set to launch. There's a bit of multitasking to do, unfortunately, sometimes. So here you're going to see me set up this manual drop on him. So we're flying just past him. And I want to line myself up so that I can drop these bombs in a manual drop, nice and tight cluster. And again, we get two fires on him, this time with a bit more damage, 7,000 damage there from four bomb hits. Really nice to see. I've lost a few with the uh, the anti-air of the New York. Bearing in mind he's a tier above me, and in the Langley you wouldn't typically normally meet a, uh, a New York. You might do, but not very often. So again, we sped up a little bit there just to bring these into place. So now we're setting up our manual drop again on the torpedoes. You see there the auto drop would drop far too far away and allow that New York to be able to turn into them and miss most of the torpedoes. So this is why we're using a manual drop on him. And again, just getting it ready just now. We want him to be enough in front and close enough that he's got very little chance of avoiding the torpedoes, if any chance at all. Here they come in for the run. It looks a good drop. He's going to take a lot of those torpedoes. And that's it. So that's the principle really. Manual drops with fire first and then we want to be able to flood afterwards. You see the, uh, the kill shot got me a flood which is really helpful. Thanks very much RNG for that one. So you can see we did quite a bit of damage in that one but your majority of your damage coming from your torpedoes. So they're your priority one. So what if there's an enemy carrier on board? So we're going to look at a simulated gameplay again just now. And uh, we're going to see what uh, what would happen if we had a carrier on the enemy team. And some of the sort of principles you can use against a carrier. Both in terms of the weapons that we use against them. And the way that he's able to drop his torpedoes and bombers onto us as well. Okay. 
Okay, so here we are again in a simulator battle against a Zuho. Uh, it's a tier above me, so typically you would be fighting the Hosho at tier 4. Um, however, you might get into a battle with 4 CVs in total. Uh, 2 on your side, 2 on the other, and it could potentially be up against uh, a Zuho. So, here you'll see me engage in his bombers with my fighters. And the Langley fighters are, are really, really strong against any of the Japanese planes. They have squads of four, I have squads of six. My fighters are stronger and better than his fighters. And this is an important basic tactic to use now. I'm, what I'm doing here, instead of destroying the entire group here, I'm thinning out the numbers. So I'm halving that group and I'm switching my fighters to halve the next group. Now with only two bombs left in the squadron, the likelihood is it's very unlikely that he's going to be able to, to do much. Now what you can see me doing there is selecting the carrier with number one and selecting the bombers with the left mouse button. That selects the uh, the bomb group as a, a target for the carrier itself. Now I'm going to let my fighter finish off the torpedo squads because they're pretty dangerous for me. At the same time, we're moving our uh, attack planes north to try and locate the carrier. So, like I was saying, with only two bombs, he wasn't able to hit me with those at all. Again, selecting the carrier and clicking on the target to make give it a priority. Langley's own latent AA is not very strong at all. Now, we've finished off the torpedo squadron entirely. And we're going to finish off these bombers as we go back. Now, given this is a bot, he hasn't sent his fighters in. This is going to cause us some trouble later. But I'm just trying to show the principles with this video. If it was a real game, I would probably have sent my fighters north, not worried too much about my own ship at this early stage. I just want to show you the very basics. So the more of his planes you can kill down, the better. Had this been a Hosho, he would be very, very short on attack planes now, and we'd be relatively safe. And importantly, I guess, so would the rest of our team. So any battleships on our team wouldn't have to worry too much about the bombers coming in now, uh, because most of them would be dead by now. Uh, there's not many spare planes in the uh, the Hosho's Bay, for example. But you see the enemy CVs engaged us with his fighters, making the bomb drop area very wide. We're unlikely to get any hits on this uh, Hosho with the bombs. It's really upsetting. I'll bring the torpedo bombers in. Hopefully the fighters will leave us alone. And we'll try the same principle as before, just ahead of it. But unfortunately, the fighters have engaged us and widened our spread. So we're only going to get perhaps a couple of hits into this, uh, this ship. Had we got more, it might have been early curtains for the uh, the carrier. As it is, it's made my job a little harder now. now we did get flooding. Uh, had we got uh, bomb hits and had he repaired those bomb hits, would have been good. You can see me using a strafe ability on this fighter just here. Uh, really good ability to use on the carriers, um, especially with the Langley strong and um, uh, strong fighters. A strafe ability allows you to destroy a good number of ships, a uh, good number of planes even, sorry, at once. Um, and here you can see him sending more torpedo bombers to me. So again, using the carrier while I've got a spare moment, setting the carrier's priority anti-air guns onto that target. I want the torpedoes down as quickly as possible. As we discussed before in that first game, you saw that my torpedo bombers did most damage. It will be the same in this if I'm not careful. So it's a long way back to my carrier. Sometimes it's better off just getting the, uh, just losing your fighters if you can do, uh, rather than have them fly all the way back. If you lose them, they'll respawn on your deck again shortly. So that's basically what I'm trying to do just now. Fly them close to his AA, get them killed, so that I don't need to worry about them. Now what you're seeing here is I'm turning left into these torpedo bombers. I don't want him to be able to get a shot perpendicular to my ship like you saw me do on his. I want to turn into them early as quickly as I can do. So always have an eye on the minimap. Now he's going to auto drop them. And you'll see why auto drop is such a bad thing right now. So those torpedoes are miles away. I'm easily able, because I saw them coming, to steer through them. His bomber doesn't get a drop on me either. Just by the skin of my teeth, I'm able to miss those torpedoes there. I'm sending further planes over. And you see me uh, using the last of the fighters up, killing some of his fighters. I'm still wanting him to kill them. He's not doing a great job of that. 
Now, a really important point to note in a moment or two, guys. So you're able to see these these dive bombers coming into me now. Again, setting them as a priority target. Just finishing off these fighters over the uh, the enemy carrier. Now we know that there's already been a, a dive bomber and a torpedo bomber dropped on me. So he hits me and he's managing to set a fire on me. Now we use the repair party there. The important point is, had that bomber been the first group of bombers to arrive, I wouldn't have used my repair party until everything had dropped. You don't want to use your repair party and then face a torpedo or get flooding and then have to sit and watch that damage tick off you all that time. So it's really important that you only repair once you know everything's dropped on you and there's nothing more to come. So with all that said and done then, what we're just going to do just this last little bit is take a look at the golden do's and don'ts or the four simple rules of carrier play. Hope you've enjoyed this video guys and if you wouldn't mind just uh, giving me a subscribe or a like that'd be really good really helps the channel out. Thanks very much and see you soon. Enjoy these carrier games. With a bit of practice you'll be getting those kills wrapped up in no time at all.